Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I ain't even sir preaching yet. <laughs> good, good. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. Paul is really tackling this with the attitude ahead. You are going back into what you used to do. You just turn a blind eye to that. Before any of you get excited about getting on Facebook and putting anything profound, just make sure you look in the mirror for a good long time. Make sure all your ducks are in a row. Make sure everything in your life, Paul said, how can I preach to others if I myself am a castaway? Just make sure you've got all your mail right, all your attitudes right, what you're doing right, and then prayerfully consider putting some profound on Facebook of how people need to change their life. Listen to this, Ephesians 5.15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectly means you're looking around. Right. Right. You know what I love about somebody who's been in the military? They always want to go into the restaurant and sit with their back to the wall. I didn't understand that. Every time I sat with somebody in the military, they sit with the back to the wall. What are you doing? Well, ain't nobody going to hit me from over here. That's right. It's all going to come that way. Oh, so be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Pay attention to your spiritual walk all around you. This is going to get so good. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. There's never been a time where that verse right there was more applicable in life. Friend, God may not come for another 200 years, but America literally is on the back foot and reeling. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yes. And be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Yes. Do you know what that is? You can, you can take that drunk with, with the wine. In Revelations, it talks about, and I don't know where the verse is, and I might misquote this, but anyway, being drunk on the wine, being drunk on a spirit. It's not necessarily just referring to alcohol and a glass of wine. So, oh, I don't drink wine. Oh, I never get drunk. I drink. That's not it. It's being drunk on the world. You're drunk on the world all week long. Then you come in on Sunday and you try to break through and get your act right because you know you're not doing it right. You don't feel good. You're, you're, it's terrible. But they're, you're drunk on the world. This is what you do as a Christian. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourself, so preach to yourself first, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know what you're doing? You're giving your spirit an opportunity to have a little light. Yes. Yes. Lord, I pray right now, God, let there be a holy anointing in this house. Anoint this precious word. Lord, use me, my body, but your words, my mouth, but your words. I pray open the ears of everyone that hears. God, don't let it just be another church service. We just went to church service. We just had a little church on in February of 2023. We just, we just came through the doors and nothing changed. We just went out the door. God, today, let something happen in our spirits that your word affects us and changes us. Move on us, Lord, I pray in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. You may be seated. Smile real quick at your neighbor. God is light, and in him is no darkness. Everything that God does, he does in the open. He doesn't do things in secret, because there's nothing to be hid. If you live it right, you don't have to hide anything. I, I will say this, okay? And, and, and I, I, I usually use me for an example, and I try not to use other people, although I try to fit Cecil into every message. <laughs> I try not to use people for an example, because I don't know how they live. I don't know how I live. And if anybody wants the keys to my house, there they are right there. It's a little Star Wars key. It's got Darth Vader's face on it. That's my house key. <laughs> While I'm preaching, drive over yonder and just look through the whole house. You know why? Because I'm living in the open before God. You understand what that means? I'm living in the open before God. I'm letting the light of the gospel work in my life so that there's nothing hid in my life. Not in my home, not in my car, not on my computer, not on my laptop, not on my iPad, not on my phone. I'm living in the light and I'm letting the light of the gospel reveal everything to me Come on. that I need to work on. Come on. To me. 
Don't, don't, don't live in sin and say I'm living, I'm, I'm living in the light. You're not. The Bible is clear on what is acceptable to the Lord. And where it's not clear, it gives principle. How many know what a principle is? Be kind one to another, tender heart, forgiving one another. Even as Christ for God's sake has forgiven you. You for God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. What is that? That's a principle of love. Well, what does it cover? Everything. It's a principle. It's all through the New Testament. God so loved the world. So we, we understand the principle of love. There's some principles of sin. What is not acceptable to God. It's black and white. There is no debate about what it is. And Sister Tanya, I appreciate the message you're, you're brought today. You're going to be bringing. I'm going to be bringing. Brother Bates is going to touch on it. Holiness has to start on the inside. I'm not worried about you on the outside if you've only been in church a short time. But eventually, your holiness on the inside is going to start being revealed on the outside. Or you're not growing. I love the sinner, but I hate sin. I love the sinner. But I will not stand in this pulpit as pastor of this church. I love everybody that comes in here. But I love you so much. You know what my dad used to say? He says, I love you too much for you to grow up and be stupid. <laughs> and so my dad was chief in the Department of Corrections. <laughs> and I look back now and I say, thank God. Oh, that close to being really stupid, but the thought of my dad kept me. My big brother who will tell you, my little brother sitting right here and he can tell you. My, my pops loved us passionately. Mom, he loved passionately. But if he didn't like you, he didn't like you passionately. <laughs> Better faith, right? right. I like faith. I love when someone comes up and loves on me. Hey, I love you. And then five minutes later, I'm like, that guy's a dirt bag. I don't even know why he's here for a while now. And I'd rather just say, you know, I'm here this morning. I'm going to preach. I don't like you as a person. Forgive me. I, I can live with that. I'd rather have you really tell me what you feel about me rather than you kind of think it all along. you got a close relationship and then find out later that you think I'm a dirt bag. Well, how do you apply that spiritually? Friend, let me tell you something. You may think you're buffaloing God by coming Sunday dressed all nice and neat, holding your hands up to heaven and blessing his name. I love you, Jesus. I pray you. But then you go out behind his back, seemingly, and you fiddle yourself with all the things of the world. Uh-oh. I don't have to worry about what you do when you're not here. That's not my job. My job is to pray for you and to encourage you and to preach to you. I care about you, but I can't control you, and I won't. If you're looking for a pastor to tell, pastor, tell me what to do. I just need to know what to do. Friend, if you still need help, you need to call your mom because you never graduated from much. I don't tell my little brother what to do. He's littler than I. Me and him get in a fight. Now we're like two more men. We're just going to kick rocks at each other. Like, Come on, be brave. We're not going to change that. Good That's all that ever happened. Nobody ever saw a single punch. His back's bad, my back's bad. Never mind, we can say we're a bunch of young and going out. We're going out. We had a big fight the other day. Do it look like what we did. Friend, you have to mean what you say. In this generation, I'm telling you, there's a bunch of people that talk with their mouth. I see their mouth loose moving and nothing's coming out. It's just a bunch of air. That's why I don't like Facebook. And I'm not preaching against Facebook this morning. But I'm trying to tell you, people will say one thing and do something else. God don't care about what you say. He's worried about what you do. And you're not hiding nothing from God. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. The birds of the air will tell the secrets of man. There's nothing you're doing. 
You yeah, know, brother, brother Monroe, you don't know me. No, I don't know you really. I know some of you. We've been around quite a while. I, I see Demo all the time. I know some of you pretty good, but I don't know you. But friend, he knows you. And when you walk into that back door, into his presence, the reason sometimes you feel uncomfortable with the service, and sometimes I feel like, well, I just don't feel like I'm part of this church. It's not you feeling a part of this church. God is trying to integrate you into the body. But there's some things you're going to have to leave at the back door when you come into the house. Because this is the place where you're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. You will not knock God wrong. Voltaire said in the 1500s, in a hundred years, the name of Jesus Christ won't be anywhere. I don't know if this is true. Just, it could be a rumor, but I read it on the internet, so it's probably true. A <laughs> hundred years later, a Bible track company bought his home and used it to print Bible tracks. <laughs> you ain't nothing. I'm nothing. Without this word, I cannot even understand God. I have no, I can feel the spirit. I can get the gift of the Holy Ghost. I can get baptized in Jesus' name. I can obey principles that I've heard somebody else tell me. But until I get into the word and try to understand the word for myself, all I'm doing is just going through the motions. I, I love it. I, and, and Danielle, I'll tell you, there's, there's, you know, there's athletes that come in the gym and they, they got every article on them that looks just like they, they should. They got the gloves, short gloves with the fingers hanging out and they got the weight belt on and they got a do-rag on and they got a tough attitude and they're over there grabbing that bar with 25 pounds on it and going, ah! <laughs> I dad would say, all show, no go. We don't want Christians in this church that have this but don't have this. I want this. I want us to walk into the church like we did on Wednesday night and the spirit of God began to move I want us to walk into church like we did today. And as we were praising and worshiping Jesus, his spirit began to move. Yes. Yes. The only thing that matters to me is the move of God's spirit. Yes. Am I pleasing in your sight, Lord? Good. Now, you know, I love you, but I'm fixing to read some scripture. It's probably going to irritate some of you. Burn it. Yeah, I will, Tom. <laughs> Turn with me to Romans, the first chapter. We're going to start at the 18th verse. I want you to listen to this carefully, okay? I'm going to read a, read a lengthy portion and do some commentary in between, but I want you to try to understand this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who's God mad at? Verse 19 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. You understand what the Lord saying? Not only do you know and you have the truth, but everything that could be revealed was revealed to you in the truth. Verse 20, for the invisible things uh, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Hmm. Hmm. Speak to us, Lord. Hmm. There's something about the word of God. When he reveals truth to you. You better, you better know that when God reveals something to you. He will hold you accountable for it. Well I, I've got a, a different revelation. I, I've heard people tell me. They were they were lived a certain way for years. And, and it was according to the word of God. And then they came to me and said. Well we, we've got a greater revelation. We, we've got a greater revelation. We, we've learned something different. Oh, oh okay. Well just. Just take me real quick, Jen. I just want to. I just want to see that. Just, just show me that greater revelation. Right. Well, what about chapter and verse? Where, who was Paul, Peter? Did they give you greater revelation? Is, is, is there revelation beyond the, the Word of God? Are you telling me that there's more I don't know about? This isn't the complete Word of God. What I miss? You better be 
be real careful before you say, well, I don't believe. You better say it more like, well, I'm not sure if it's in the word or not. Let me check. We're too quick just to throw away God's word. We're too quick just to think, well, that's not for me. That was for that generation and those people. Yada, yada, yada. Wait, 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 wait. That's not how I read it. Read Galatians, the first chapter. Paul was already mad at the Galatians and he was still alive and breathing. He was writing from a jail cell, fixing to, in Rome, he was fixing to get killed. And, and he wrote this book and, and, he, and he said, oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you to believe another gospel other than what we have preached unto you. If anybody preached any other gospel, saying what we have preached, let him be a curse. You know what that tells me? End of Revelation. What are you saying, Brother Luke? I'm telling you, you won't have a new revelation outside of the Word of God. You know, in this generation, you know, it's okay if a man wants to be a woman. No, it is not. Just give me chapter and verse it out. Where, where is that? Well, you know, you can you don't have to be married if you got a girlfriend, you got you gotta live with it for a while for you guys to understand get along, or I can only get married and get divorced. Well, that, show me that one. I need to find that one too. Oh, it doesn't matter what I put in my body, some drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, smoking, drinking, all kinds of filth of the world. It don't matter what I put in my body. Wait, who's the Lord of the The body, him shall not destroy. In there it says, whosoever shall destroy the temple of God, him shall not destroy. Well, you don't need a good diet, but I'm working on that. But let me tell you something. You have to eat. People in Ethiopia don't have a good diet right now either during famine. I'm not excluding gluttony, okay? But I am telling you. And before you get outside of the Word of God, you better make sure you're in the Word of God. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I love to hear these preachers that get up in the pulpit and say, God is love, and you are saved by the grace of God. And the only thing you need to do is accept Jesus as your personal Savior and live in the grace of God. You know, the Presbyterian Church or the Methodist Church or both is split right down the middle. Because one half wants to have homosexuals in the church in the pulpit, and the other half don't. Last time I checked in the Bible, which I'm about to read it if you don't know Romans, the first chapter. There is no place for that in the church. Right. In the body of, of, the, of, the, of the living. Of, we are the living body of Jesus Christ. We are the living body of Jesus Christ. We're the body of Christ. Right. That ain't in the body. Hang on, because these kids are going to hear this and it gets a little ugly. You can explain it to them at home. Amen. And changed. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fool. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four footed beasts, and to creeping things. My God, this generation will worship anything but God. That's the truth. Yeah. Yes. I was just listening to some preaching this morning. And a pastor, a well-known pastor, Brother Anthony Mangan. How do you know uh, be a, uh, Anthony Mangan? You've heard of him. He was in a, in a pretty liberal state. He came to preach for a man. And he walked into a bathroom in a coffee shop. I won't say which one, but they had the little face, you know, little boat. He walked in there, and there was a litter box in the men's room. And he went to the front of the desk and asked them, why is there a litter box? In the bathroom, because the health code won't let a cat in the building. And the lady behind the desk said, It's not for cats. My God, what would it be for? For those who identify as animal. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm scared for my grandkids. I'm, I'm terrified for my grandkids. You can't figure out what you are. This generation doesn't know what they are. You know why? They're not in the Word. 
and the ones that are in the word have so twisted the word that they'll just let anything be anything. No, God loves you how you are. God loves you how you are, but he'll never leave you how you are. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. You want to go stop the adultery and they're proud of the story and he got her out of it. And he looked at her and he said, now go and sin no more. He healed the, the lame man. He said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Oh, well, he ain't going to leave you like where you're at. No, sir. No, when, when the man was filled with the devils, and, and he ran and fell at the feet of Jesus, and he, he begged God. The man was filled with devils, and he begged God for deliverance. He cast out the devils. The next day, he was sitting there clothed and in his right mind. You get that? What happened? What happened? I just want you to know what happened. He was clothed and in his right mind. Yeah. If God would have left him and loved him like he would, he'd get naked yeah. and out of his mind. Yeah. But he was clothed in his right mind. Because when you get in the presence of God, yeah. there is a holiness in heaven, and there's a holiness in God's word, and there's a holiness we need to live by. Yeah. Yes. I'm sick of this world telling me how I'm supposed to live. That's right. If pastor goes to jail, just bring me some money, put on a little card. You that work in the jails, I expect a prayer meeting or fellowship or something from you every week. <laughs> Pastor, how you doing? We only got seven Joe the Holy Ghost. We're going to have to that, figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many got filled with Holy Ghost? None. They're, they're too scared to put them in the jail cell with me. <laughs> they come the next week. Brother, what are you doing in the jail cell? Well, we got 19 filled with Holy Ghost. How? I said, I preached through the wall. I was yelling with my lips in the bars about Jesus. And I can hear them speak with tongues. Y'all yeah. laughing. Mom, I'm prophesying what my dad been saying for years. Friend, you, you won't have to wait for, for it to find you. You, you. you don't have to wait to find it. It's coming for you. It's going to knock on your big door someday. You're going to be at work and sitting at your desk. And someone's going to come up and say, I'm post. And you're going to be all in this. I'm going to post that you put on Facebook the other day. And it offended me. And in comes a little mind cop or your, your employer who knows you're a good employee, but he's bowed and cowed by the by the temperature and by the by the just the, the, the trash is being pumped out in this world. He's cowed by that. And so he'll put some lesser employee in your place and fire you because that person doesn't agree with your opinion. It's coming here today. It's coming for you. Don't this is what God does, though. He, in his first uh, first six seven verses, he he points out that they knew God, but they didn't glorify Him as God. And because they they knew everything about God, they knew everything. There was nothing hidden from them. Every mystery, they knew everything about God, but they denied who He was, and they began to serve and worship other things. I I don't like the fact that we call people superstars because they're not. They're just not. They got a little bit of talent. And one of those small little, I know most of them don't know how to change oil in their car. <laughs> Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So let me ask you a question. Where did God let the defilement come? Come on, some of you guys preach with me this morning. Where did it come? Daniel, I love you. In the body, he let them defile themselves in their body. So what you do in the body means something to God. How you treat this body means something to God. You can't help it if you get cancer or you have some kind of physical defect or you're struggling emotionally or mentally. God can heal you, but that's not something you can control. If I get hit by a car and I'm paralyzed from the waist up, that's not something I can control. I didn't, I didn't abuse my body. But I love people who come, brother, and pray for me, pray for me, as they, as they got emphysema. And, they're, my, my, I, and this, is a, this is a family member. They're, they're dying. Hey, come pray for me. They got oxygen, and they got a cigarette over here because they don't want to catch the oxygen on fire. I can't help you. You wouldn't hear me if I did. That's the truth. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Oh boy, here we, 
We fix to preach here now. Hang on to your shoelaces. We fix to preach. They turn the truth of God into a lie. Look where this lie takes us. This is the lie that he's talking about. He turned the truth of God into a lie, Tanya. It says, and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise the men leaving the natural use of the women burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly. And receiving in themselves the recompense of the error which was the meat. They did not want to glorify God. So God turned them over. Yeah. And in their body, they defiled themselves. Yeah. It gets better. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Listen to me. I've had people say, Brother Monroe, I feel like I've sinned and I've got a reprobate mind. I don't know what to do. Friend, if you're worried about your sin, you are not reprobate. That's the truth. That's good. Because these people, because they love sin so much, God just turned them over to a reprobate mind and they were no longer worried about it. They just weren't worried about it. They would just be bold with their sin. I grew up in San Francisco. You guys don't know nothing. I'm sorry. You Southern? How many are Southern? Raise your hand. Okay, that's most of you. Thank you. I love you, Daniel. Most of you are Southerners. There's a few Northerners. I'm from California. We weren't in the war. We cannot. I'm moving on from my thought because I just had another one. You can never accept what the world is pushing on you. Because that will lead you to a reprobate mind. That's right. Exactly right. That's right. You understand that? Yes. If you're concerned about sin in your life, you don't have a reprobate mind. If God can speak to you, or you can hear preaching, or you can hear, you can read the word and feel some conviction in your heart about what you're doing, you're not reprobate. That's exactly right. Come on. But if you get to the point where the preaching getting up and he preaches and you're not concerned about it. And you don't think the word applies there, so there's no concern there. And all the world saying it's okay, then friend, there's no reaching you. There's there's no hope for you. I, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. He turned them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Now let's just for those that need it spelled out for you, okay? When pastor gets up there and preaches against thing, when, when Brother Bates gets up and preaches against thing, when, when Chris gets up and preaches the same, Tanya, other people testify or teach you something at home, let me just get to the nut of it, okay? If you need to know what exactly is sin, well, here we go. You ready? Amen. You're also smiling. <laughs> Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and manners of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without a natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. I think that covers So I don't understand those words. Get yourself a dictionary. You're going to need it. it covers, that just covers everything. Well, it didn't call it my thing. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Remember principle? You know what principles are? It's a concept that is threaded through everything. God wants you holy. And this body, what you do in this body, what you do in this body. I won't pick on Cecil because he's near the head. Well, I don't know his father mom. I won't pick on Cecil. Cecil, it don't matter. A lot of things don't matter anymore now that you're a little older, huh? They all matter. Your relationships matter. It don't matter how big a car you got, how big a house you got. You ain't got a boyfriend man telling you about him. It takes a while. <laughs> the older you get, the natural desires of the flesh seem to wear out. You know why? Because it just don't matter anymore. Somebody told me, hey, let's go over here to the, to the, uh, what's the, uh, what's that place that's a uh, buffet? Golden Corral. Golden Corral. Let's go to the Golden Corral, brother. I'm like, no. 
A food bag? No. What's the problem? I can't eat enough for the $19 haircut. That's true. Amen. Now I'd take Tommy. We'd all get thrown out together. <laughs> but I ain't going. It don't do me no good. I've told this joke before, and it's so applicable right now. This old man goes down to this pond, and, and he's walking, he's in the park, and he goes down to this pond, he sees this little frog river, and he looks down at the frog, and he sees somebody, and all of a sudden the frog says, kiss me, I'm a beautiful princess. And he looks down, right, the frog says, kiss me, I'm a beautiful princess. And he reaches down real carefully and picks the little frog up. And he said, she said, kiss me, I'm a beautiful princess. And this 98-year-old man looks at that frog and says, I don't know what I'm going to do with a princess, but I love a talking frog. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, young people. There's going to come a day where just the things you thought were so important, they don't matter. I remember so many people in high school were so popular. They were just the in crowd. I've lived long enough to see that they're the out crowd. Matter of fact, a lot of them aren't even alive. Several of them are in prison right now. The ones I thought had it all together. Uh-oh. Friend, the only way you get your act together is if you get your act out of the Bible. You have to let the word seek into your heart, get into your mind, get into your spirit. You cannot allow the contemporary thinking, that's the general thinking of this area, this generation. You can't allow this generation to tell you that something's okay if the word of God said it's not. It didn't change. Yes, that's right. Right. You have a brother Monroe? No, don't you have a brother Monroe me? It, it won't do. I'm, it, it won't do any good. You're, you're, you're preaching. You're just talking to deaf ears here. You know, on my dad was honorary when he was getting old. He's, he's not in here, and I'm preaching now. I think tell you something I appreciate about my dad, and I find it in myself more and more. The older he got, the more simplistic his life had to become. And he said. Son, the thing I hate about old age is when you finally get to the age where you have something worth saying, the young people won't hear you. That's true. That's true. Friend, you want to know how drugs will affect you? We got anybody been delivered from some kind of drugs? Raise your hand. Anybody been delivered from drugs? You want to know what, what uh, a living in a life of permanent studio will do for you? Some of you raise your hand. Yeah, go ahead and see them after church. You want to you live a life full of uh, lies and deceit? Uh, how many of you have been in prison for jail? Some, me? Yeah, yeah. Friend, there's people in here that will tell you that everything the world is selling as good and acceptable is just devil wrapping a new package. That's right. Yes. You can take out people with those lies for generations. If he can quell this word, if he can, if he can just put a stop to you preaching this word, if he can make you uncomfortable, are you embarrassed? Are you ashamed of this word while you're at church, at school, where you're on your job? If you're just ashamed, I gotta live like the rest of them. I gotta fit in, friend. If you're afraid to show really what the word of God says, a woman and a man should look like, friend, you need to pray. You just need to pray. If you need some counseling, I'm open. There's some men in our church that can teach some of you young men how to be men. And there's some ladies in this church that can teach some of you ladies how to be a woman. There's nothing in between. You don't have that alphabet soup up there, friend, but, but you, you just male and female. It's so funny. They, uh, you know, everywhere and everything, except on the form at the doctor's office, will they ask you, about male and female. Now there was one I saw. I I, I, I read one that said, uh, "Choose not to disclose," but there was only two choices. You don't like us when it comes to medical things. No, sir, I'm male. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> if you get outside of the Word of God, you get into trouble. The reason we preach as hard as we do is uncomplete. The reason I'm preaching as hard as I am. The reason I'm pushing. The reason this voice in this pulpit, as long as I'm here and have strength, I will not be silent. If you're struggling with something and you want help, 
come see me. Yeah. If you're struggling with something, you're resisting me, and you're telling other people in the church the pastor's wrong, I'm praying for you. I don't even need to know about it. God sorts his business out for him. You, 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 you'll be like Simon the sorcerer is following Paul. Once Paul got sick of it, he just once, once he had enough of his mouth, he just turned around and said, Simon, you're filled with all the, all of the evil of hell, and you'll be blind. And you know what? He had this person leading him around blind. You don't think there's authority in God's word in God's house, friend? You ain't been around the house of God very, very long. There is an authoritative word right here that gives this church the power and the authority and the anointing, the purpose, the reason to preach the word as, as it is written and not to change it at all. And this, this last verse is for you that, that don't do any of those bad things. I, pass to pass, I don't do any of those things. Well, that's great. I got a verse for you too. Go to the next verse. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgments of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So I don't understand what that says, Brother Monroe. I know, it's, it's old English. Anybody know what voyeurism is? You're committing sin if you're watching it. You're committing sin if you're watching them sin and taking pleasure in your sin. That's why David said, I'll put no evil thing before my eyes. We got a generation of men that are so perverted, not that they want to be, but pornography has changed what a woman is in their mind. And so they marry a gal and she don't perform like she's supposed to and they got to throw her away and find what they The only 
way you'll overcome your flesh is if you'll overcome that desire to stay the same as you are today. I have to change. Yes, you do. How am I going to change? You're going to break out of that little field, that little circle 